in this back room. Hey, come bother me in the men's room. Yeah. And now for your hosts, Baz Rutten and Jeremy St. Ives. All right, hi everybody. My name is Boss Rutten, and I'm and welcome to the man's room. Yeah, yeah, let's kick it up. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's do this. Listen, the ratings are coming in, and people come to me and they say, "Boss, how is this show on the air?" And I say, "This is a reality show." Yes. Two men in the bathroom talking. That's reality. That's where we can be ourselves. Talk about women, talk about love, and talk about snipping the vertebrae in a man's spine. How about going to the phones? How about going to the phones? I know it's time to go to the phones. Hey, let's go to the phones. So, who's on line eight? Hello? Who's there? I am watching you. Who is this? I know where you live. I'm watching you. I'm in your house. I'm sorry, sir, creepy guy, but I'm going to break your leg. Please attack me, and I will please return the favor. I'm going to rip off your arm, and I'm going to beat you with the red hand. Bang! Bang! And then I'm going to make love to your femur. You know? Just like a dog. Baz, don't, don't. I'm, I'm really scared. Maybe it's that serial killer everybody's talking about. I don't think so. He kills homosexuals. And whereas we, Jeremy, we are tough guys. Tough as nails. Nails, you know what? I shoot a nail into my hand right now. Ooh. That's what we're all about. About helping people through difficult times in the man's room. Yeah, that's, that's right. Difficult times. You know what? You know what? 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 Okay. I want to tell you something. On the streets, everything is legal. Being a man is legal. Well... Not quite everything is legal, Bass, uh, but between consenting adults, most people turn a blind eye these days. I never turn a blind eye. You turn a blind eye, listen, you got to get blinded. Bang, bang, bang! Listen, I get my wisdom from the Greeks. You must be like a centaur, part man, part horse. You get drunk and carry off the maiden and anybody say anything, what do we do, Jeremy? Knee to the groin? Exactly, yes, right there, Pull! That's gotta hurt. You're playing a game, and we're calling this game Blue Ball Baseball. I did it once in the bar brawl in Manila. And all the guy at God, all that guy left, left was his blind eyes. And I walk to him, and I go, bah, bah, bah. So just three little jabs. Is that a retainer on your shirt, or are you just glad to see me? Boom, boom, boom. Three hooks later, I slide him down the bar, his face full of fucking glass. I swear to God, he'll never see again. It's... I, I do a shot, I play some pinball, and then, just for good measure, an elbow <clears throat> to the face, just like that. Yeah. Well, you know what I don't turn a blind eye to? Blind people with the seeing eye dogs. They don't have to pick it up. I mean, I wish I could poop in public without having to pick it up. I have no idea what you're just talking about, but hey, listen, yes. I'm sure it's covered in my next book. Pre-order now to avoid disappointment, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, great. Just what the world needs. Another book about how to solve conflict with a nail gun and a bad temper. You heteros are all the same. Let's go to the phones. Hello, line five. I see your problem. Hmm. You gotta get back to the basics because that's your problem. You know what a great aphrodisiac is? Anger. Hmm. Pain is even better. Just don't take it too far. That's why grudge sex is the <laughs> best sex you can have. Right? Yes. Yes. You gotta hate him, Paula. That's what I'm telling you. You gotta hate him. Um, okay. Yeah, and every time you make love, don't make love. Make hate. <laughs> <laughs> Call him names. I really mean it. Little dick, no balls, that kind of stuff. Let him hit you a few times. Pack! Just on your freaking face! And then you really let him have it. I said to my lady, really, go on, smack me around. Take that chair, hit it right across my head. Bam! Because that's erotic. That 
Men like this, Paula, I'm telling you. And then, Paula, give it to him with a baseball bat. Mm, yeah. So he's seconds away from calling the cops. <laughs> or, of course, we can always deliver the good crack in the pills. <laughs> Baz. Uh, okay. Thanks, Baz. I'll be sure to try that and let you know. Thanks. Next caller, come into the men's room. <laughs> Jeremy Bud, this show is going to be fucking great! Oh, oh. So, uh, who's on the phone? Hey, Bass, my name's Travis. Your show sucks. You're not so tough. Yo, you teach all this stuff, but I could take you. Trust me, I have a gun. All your stupid roundhouse kicks and stuff can't beat a gun, homie. Lead travels fast, biatch. Oh, Travis, buddy, please hang on the line, okay? Because I want to tell you something. The Garden of Lavender and Roses is one that you have to crawl through over thorns with a knife in your mouth. Exactly. You bite back the tears with the blood running down your face. Mm. This analogy is for life. And it's all covered in my next book. Crawling through the Garden of Lavender and Roses over thorn with a knife in your mouth and slightly aroused. Yes. Listen, I teach you, Travis. You live in Liberty City, right, uh, Tudor? Uh, uh yeah. But, but how do you know that? Well, let me tell you this pretty soon in about five minutes, you will hear a knock on your door <laughs> and three guys will be there. Hmm. The first rule of violence is don't always commit the crime yourself. Now, if you are choking on the sheriff and waiting for the posse to come or making the cyclops fly, it's no matter because sometimes we all have to wait in the dark. Discipline. I tell it to Jeremy all the time. Discipline. It's discipline. Don't let the images Jeremy, of your stepfather, hound you. Don't, don't let him. Don't tell no, him no, about No, 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 you're a man. It's okay, it's okay. What happened is in the past. You're still a man. Okay. Don't worry. You are alone. Alone with your heartbeat. Life quickly spirals out, to, out of control, Jerry. Hmm. I mean, come on. One day, you look in the mirror, and then suddenly, you just punch it. Punch! And at that moment, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you see the broken reflection, and you, you feel empty inside. Bass. Bass, come on, let's, let's get back on track here. That's right. When you fight the game of your life, punch your opponent in the liver, and that is pow, right there. That's the liver. You have to have the wings of an eagle, the body of a lion, and the tail of a howler monkey. People say, hey, listen, I don't want to study martial arts. The problem with martial arts is the years of training and celibacy. You can't fuck. It's out of, out of the fucking question. It's well known that ninjas aren't allowed to touch themselves or they lose their edge. And if you lose your edge, not good. Now, this gives you great focus and precision when you're cutting off someone's head. My method is I teach you how to feel this anger. Obliterate. Obli obliterate. Obliterate your opponent and ruin his chances at reproduction. And you know what? You're gonna get the girl in the end. It's a great story. You know what else is a great story, Jeremy? Well, I really like Little Red Riding Hood. World War II is a great story. Vietnam, the Falkland Islands, Australia. Man with bare hands taking care of business. Setting people on fire. <laughs> Burning their faces. And that's all the time we have for this time. This time. This has been Bass and Jeremy in the men's room. Join us next time in the men's room. Only sissies wash their hands.